Hey, Hustle Citas. It is Tuesday afternoon, and I bet you're surprised to see a new episode up so quickly after the last one. <laughs> but I have gotten my stuff together, and I am, you know, ready to put all the information out there. Um, this is going to be the second part of what was supposed to be one episode, but knowing my audience, I know that you guys are too busy to sit around and listen to me um, go on and go off topic for over an hour. So I decided to break it into two. So the, here's a second part of the five biblical declarations to reset your mindset when life is a hot mess. Um, so this will actually be three. However, you're already caught up, so hopefully it won't go <laughs> for a full 30 minutes, but we'll see how it goes. Um, before we get started, I did want to mention how excited I am about the fact that we are less than 20 episodes away from 1,000 downloads. So that doesn't really mean anything other than, you know, it's, you know, a milestone that, you know, I have been able to keep going despite the long hiatus and, of course, you know, had hoped to be here sooner, but life happens. You know it. That's why you're here and listening. Um, what I want to do is just have some sort of contest or giveaway just to celebrate the 1,000 um, downloads once we hit it. So um, what I would like, if you are interested, um, go ahead, in order to get entered into the giveaway, all you need to do is um, write a review is one way that you can be entered, or you can sign up for my email list. Um, all of that will be in the show notes. Or if you've already <clears throat> written a review and signed up on the email list, then um, share this episode or any episode, your favorite episode, um, on your social media and tag me in it. So you don't have to do all of those things. Um, just pick one, <laughs> whatever floats your boat, and um, make sure you tag me on Instagram. I'm Tia.Finn, and on Facebook, I am, you know, it's the Heal Thy Spirit podcast is below. So, um, all right, let's get started. I am excited. Let's go. Hey, busy lady. Welcome to the Heal Thy Spirit podcast. Do you want to stop procrastinating and stay motivated to get things done? Are you a time-starved night owl constantly searching for ways to have time freedom? Do you wake up most mornings with audacious goals only to get distracted and overwhelmed when your busy life sidetracks your agenda? Then, instead of focusing on your to-do list, you've wasted countless hours scrolling Facebook ads for goal planners and habit trackers because all your multitasking has robbed the mental clarity you need to stay on target. Well, sis, you're in the right place. I, too, was juggling work, kids, and multiple responsibilities. I felt exhausted and disorganized and wished I could establish efficient daily habits and routines. I wanted more time, a flexible schedule, and a plan I could stick to. You know, actually finish what I'd started. I used to think everyone else's needs should come first, and I truly believed chasing my own dreams was selfish, until I discovered my secret ingredient. Success coaching mixed with a little planning and a lot of prioritization. In this podcast, you'll get useful time-saving tools, habit hacks, and the accountability to ignite your own fire so you can hit those targets and confidently crush your goals. I'm a talker and a no-holds-barred kind of teacher, so go grab one of those pretty little notebooks I know you've been hoarding. Girl, me too. It's crush time. Hello, it's me, Tia, back again with the rest of the five biblical declarations to reset your mindset when life is a hot mess. This is episode 13, um, and I am excited to um, really quickly give you this these declarations that I use and the verses that go along with it, and then we'll talk about how... Um, you can come up with your own. Um, all right. So, you know, we already, already talked on Saturday, the first two, just to recap really quickly. Um, number one was God is in control and victory is already mine when I accept his assignment for me. Um, number two, delayed is not denied. There is more than enough time to do everything the Lord wants completed. 
and now we're kicking in now if you haven't listened to Sunday's episode number 12 go back and listen to that so that this doesn't seem so weird that I'm just abruptly starting a new episode um but anyway I have I have three more for you and uh the number three is going to be I have no shame in letting go and letting God this one I have to constantly remind myself um that everything is not for me to fix I want I hear a problem I hear you know someone that I care about going through something and I just want to make it all better and I'm sure you know many of you can relate to that um but we have to remember that you know we do have a role you know in the things that we are responsible for but we can't do anything alone and everything that we do does depend on us letting go and letting God do what God does. Um, the first scripture that I want to mention is Psalm seventy three twenty six. It says, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So oftentimes we're always looking for the answers and it's not necessarily the answer that's going to come as we talked about in the previous episode you know it's all in God's timing and you know for whatever whatever you're going through um you're still here you're still living so there is no um while it while it may be unpleasant we we can't you know give up and feel like feel like when we do fail you know as it says my flesh and my heart may fail but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever it's just remembering that he's here and he's not gonna leave us and you know when you can't figure it out it's okay just you know pray give it to him and you know see see where it see where it leads you um, the, the second scripture, Proverbs 16, 9, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. This is one of my favorite ones because as you know, Tia is a planner. I love, I have, I don't even want to talk about how many planners and calendars and notebooks I have and how many great ideas that, you know, I've come up with and, you know, all the things because I just love everything that goes into having a plan. I don't want to walk into a situation and not be prepared, um, which obviously it's not possible to prepare for everything. However, you can be in the best situation that or put yourself in the best situation that you could possibly be in. And then here comes the Lord (laughs) directing your way and showing you what what his will is. So it's important to remember, you know, the things that you want in your heart, you should go after them and you should plan for them and, you know, take direction. But remember who's guiding your steps. Um, The next one, another popular one, Proverbs 3, this is actually 2, verses 5 and 6. This is from the ESV version. And I know a lot of people have, you know, heard this one as well. Um, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Um, Kind of a reiteration of what we were just talking about, but... um, the do not lean on your own understanding part in recognizing that it's everything is not for us to know. It is not our job to know why God does what he does. Um, you know, we are here to serve him and to serve each other. And sometimes it doesn't make sense when, you know, disappointing things happen you know, we always want the answers, especially if you're like me, it's just like, well, why? But why? But why? (laughs) The why doesn't always matter. Um, And, you know, just remembering to trust in him. That is, you know, for me, kind of a conviction, because, you know, for somebody who always wants to know all the answers all the time, um, I definitely have to check myself on a regular and remember, hey, God's got this. Let go and let God. Um, number four, First Peter 5, 7. This is the New Living Translation. Um, Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Period. 
Pray about it, girl. Pray about it. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, ESV version. Um, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Um, it's funny because I hadn't, you know, really planned on recording this around Labor Day. It was just something that came to me and that I felt that I should share it with you all. But um, yesterday was Labor Day. Um, so I was off work and Vaughn was also off work and um, we did nothing yesterday. <laughs> we watched TV, uh, caught up on some Netflix, um, ate dinner, well had breakfast and dinner, kind of skipped lunch and you know basically did nothing um, and you know it's a stressful time right now for us trying to get everything situated, figuring out how we're going to get furniture and um, well, I say that we have our furniture from the old place, but there was some stuff that we left in Virginia and, um, you know, it's just a whole thing that's going on right now, you know, trying to coordinate with the movers that have our stuff in storage and, um, you know, figuring out the finances of this new expense that we have, because as I said, we still have our home in Virginia. So it's just a lot going on right now. And, um, you know, making sure that you are taking a day, at least one day every week to, you know, even if you're not religious or, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, have to work on Sunday because it's not really um, in your, in your realm to, you know, make the decision that, you know, I'm just not going to work today because it's Sunday and it's the Sabbath. And, you know, sadly, not everyone is, you know, Chick-fil-A and <laughs> shuts their doors on Sunday. So I get that. And this is not, you know, a judgment or anything like that it doesn't necessarily have to be on Sunday. But just make sure that you are taking a minute to take care of yourself and know that whatever's out there, it's going to be there for you the next day. And again, God has it under control. You can let it go and take a rest. But the first part of that, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So the rest is in him. All right, number four, as far as the declarations go, I am present and live intentionally, recognizing that today is my assignment. God will take care of tomorrow. This one is so, so relevant right now. Um, I have, I never <laughs> slow down and kind of drop off the the face of the planet. I mean, I'm not one that's really hugely addicted to social media to begin with, but um, literally when we drove here, when we got here, I was only speaking to basically my children, which one of them was here doing an internship, Devron, um, which he got a job offer for, by the way, little side note there. So God is good all the time for sure. Um, and you know, we have two that were still back home. So just basically our communication was just all with them. It was just so tiring and so exhausting getting across the country, getting here, getting settled, and then just kind of taking a breath. So, I mean, there were friends that were just like, I'm just checking on you. Did you make it? <laughs> What's going on? You know, I talked to my sister, I talked to my mom, talked to my brother. Um, but just, um, no, just being present and enjoying the moment and, you know, not being in such a hurry, worrying about, you know, what the next thing is, what the next big thing is that you have to tackle, you know, tackle what, what, what's put before you today and God will take care of tomorrow. So this is the first verse is my favorite um, verse in the entire Bible. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. That's the, you know, it's a short one too. So it was one of the first ones I ever memorized. Um, I don't really remember the addresses though. Like, I'll be honest, I do the memorization and sometimes I know the context, but I can't tell you where, where it came from. So I'm getting a little bit better about that, but that's not important. What's important is that you know the word and that you understand um, what it means to you or what it means for you. So, um, you know, just 
again, talking, I told you I str- struggle with that trust part. So, you know, when I think about this, I have to remember my faith and that's what I need to, not need to, but that's what I get to let guide me versus what I can see coming and what, you know, is provable and all that jazz. But I think you get it. Um, the next one, Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And that's, I guess I like that one because it's almost the same thing, just with more words. And, you know, I always like more words, but now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And that's just, you know, giving you a little, you know, telling you it's okay to hope. Faith is just being confident that what you're hoping for is going to happen and you know the reassurance that even though we can't see it it doesn't mean it's you know not for you so that's what i have to say about that one matthew 6:34 therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself um kind of <clears throat> again more living in the moment and um understanding that you know today just just worry about today don't let tomorrow's worries steal your joy today I guess is an easier way to say it um next one Proverbs 27 1 do not boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day may bring so while you're spending your time today worrying about all the things that you cannot control and that you do not know will happen or won't happen (laughs) um you know you never know because one day one day's you know 24 hours you know all kinds of things have changed I mean look at look at me I'm sitting here you know two months ago I was living in a completely different state and had a completely different job and I just, I don't even know, but already, you know, I'm sitting here, you know, we've not only have we made the decision to move here, but we are here. We are physically in another state. I am physically working at another job and, um, you know, the same thing with that. You, you just don't know what God has in store for you. So don't, don't be worrying about it. He's got it. He's got it. Um, and then the last one, um, Psalm 37, 7, it says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. So we all know somebody, there's a person that you're just like, why does she get this? And why does she get that? That's not the way that, you know, things should be done. Um, you know, for me, that's particularly difficult because I'm a role follower. I, if you give me a list that I'm supposed to carry out, I'm going to follow those instructions to the T and it does like, I, I'm getting better with it now, but it is really hard for me to, um, to, uh, bend when it comes to, you know, and, and we're probably all like that just within different different things. Um, but when you have an established belief where you think or and know, where you know something to be true or something to be right or a procedure to be <laughs> the way it needs to be carried out and people cut corners and they, um, you know, just kind of go their way instead of what you believe to be the right way and they still succeed and I mean it's it's sometimes heart-wrenching depending on you know what the situation is but this verse speaks to me in that it's saying you know be still it's not your job to you know necessarily point it out don't be jealous of it wait patiently your turn is coming when they the people that have gotten the things that they have um by you know less than (laughs) less than clean ways I don't know what I'm trying to say I'm just kind of um and you'll notice that I didn't edit the last episode so I'm sure there's plenty of ums and ahs and 
you know, me misstepping over my words because I also don't have anything written up as far as other than these verses as to what to mention. So I'm just kind of flying off the cuff, which is, you know, a new practice for me because we already talked about my need to control and make sure everything's perfect. So anyway, um, back on the topic, what I was saying is, you know, in the end, God will handle it. God will handle, you know, the people that got their goods. You don't know the whole story. We always talk about like on, you know, like on the internet, like Facebook and Instagram and whatever, how people, um, you know, never post the bad things. And you think, you, you know, you're following this person and you think they have this great, incredible life. And, you know, just remember that you don't know the whole story. You don't know what's behind the scenes. And it's also not your place to judge whether what they did was right or wrong. Like God handled that. He's the judge. Um, so that's all I need to say about that. Um, the fifth and final one, I am diligent in the waiting because I know that the plans God has for me, prosperity, safety, hope, and a future. And I'm sure you can figure out the main verse where I pulled that little declaration from. Um, it'll be the first one here, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 12. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Um, not really any more to say, although I will say that is um, such a beautiful verse. And if you look at different versions, and I actually didn't write down which version I pulled that one from, but it says the same thing in different ways. So I do encourage you to, you know, look at different versions of the same verses and kind of find the one that flows with you the best, um, that speaks to you the most, because, you know, in the end, it's, you know, it's all the truth. That's, I think my, my pastor says that on Sundays when he's <laughs> referencing different versions um, of the scripture that he's preaching from. So anyway, there's that. Um, the second one that goes along with this um, declaration is Lamentations 3 verses 25 through 26. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Again, patience. Um, and this one is, you know, don't misunderstand this. Um, it's not saying that the Lord is not good to those who don't hope in him. But, um, you know, good things will come. And if you go to him and you seek him and seek his guidance, then, you know, in the end, you will get the answers that you're looking for. That's essentially what I take from that. Um, the next one, Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Um, yeah, that's, that's my MO. <laughs> Work hard, not too hard because you don't want to become weary in doing the good that you're doing, whatever that good is. Um, but at when it's time for you to rest, you will see, you know, you will receive what you're looking to receive. So, um, or what God has for you to receive, I should say. And that's not to say that we do things to get things. Um, but, you know, the goal is to be good in general to others and to yourself. And if you follow that and you stick to that, then, you know, and that doesn't mean you're not going to have hard times, obviously, you know, we 100% will go through things. And then once you think you've, you know, hit the top of the mountain and, you know, are living great, something else will come and knock you down. But that's the way of life. I mean, uh, God does that to remind us that we need him, that, you know, if you um, we're talking about the one thing that, um, in one of the studies that we were reading about the widow and, um, you know, the, the having enough oil to, um, continue to feed her son and Elijah when he came to her, um, 
you know, it was one day at a time. So she had just enough oil and enough flour for one loaf of bread. And she was obedient and she gave that one loaf, you know, she made that bread and she fed Elijah first before her and her son, which she thought she was going to die, you know, after, (laughs) you know, after that, before he came into her life and, you know, day after day, um, there continued to be sufficient oil and flour for her to continue to feed her family. And, you know, that's really what this is saying is that, um, I don't know, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but, you know, basically saying that if we're, if we're good or, you know, not if we're good, that's definitely not what I meant to say, but if we're doing good and being obedient and, and trusting again, there's that word, trusting that he will provide for us, everything is going to work out. It's going to be fine. Um, and then the next first, um, Ephesians 5, 15 through 16, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. So that sounds kind of dark, <laughs> but it does speak to what I've been talking about, you know, this entire time time, you know, since the beginning of the episode, I guess I've been rambling for, you know, 22, 23 minutes now. Um, But what it's saying, it's saying, and when it, you know, be very careful how you live and to live, you know, not unwise, but as wise. So, you know, think about what you're doing and be smart. That's really all that saying. And then every opportunity that's presented to you, make the most out of it. That's what it's there for. Um, You're not always going to have good days. I think that's what that means. This is, you know, probably the King James version or something. I'm not sure. But um, (laughs) because the days are evil and we all know it. That's why you're here. That's what you're looking for. You know, a little bit of sunshine, you know, to bring you out of whatever it is, whatever the thing is, whether it be your finances, whether it be your relationship, whether it be your children who won't listen, whether it be your job that's sucking the life out of you whatever it is, you know, recognize that, you know, you've survived whatever that thing is before, you will survive it again. And, you know, like the old phrase says, you know, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. That's basically what this verse is (laughs) saying, (laughs) Um, at least to me. And then the, the final, um, scripture that goes to this declaration make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy without holiness no one will see the lord that's hebrews 12 14 and again to be holy does not mean to be boring and to not have a life i think i mentioned that on um, the previous episode is that you know just look for peace, look, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated and the way you would want people to treat your children or your sister or your mother and, you know, live well. And, you know, that's, that's, that's what our assignment is. Our assignment is to love God and to love others as we love ourselves. That's the definition of holy. So, um, take from it what you will. That is all that I have for you today. I'll recap really quick all five. Um, And yeah, what I'd like to do, I mean, go ahead and hop over into the Facebook group and, you know, comment. I guess I'll put a post in there. I haven't been over there in a while. Everyone probably thinks that, you know, I fell off the face of the planet. (laughs) But I'll go over there and put a post in and you can let me know what verses or declarations that you have. just in, you know, encouraging you and they, you know, my good coaches have, you know, taught me that it takes about 67 days to form a habit where something becomes automatic. And, you know, if you are saying these declarations, these or ones that you come up with your own, like I said, go to the Bible and find the scriptures that speak to you and tell you the truth about you and what you want your life to be. And, you know, write these down every day or put them on a sticky note and just recite them out loud or record yourself saying them. That's, you know, 
one of the things that I do and play them back for, you know, 10 minutes a day in the morning and at, at night. And, um, you know, over time, our brain, it's really an interesting thing is that what you say is what you become. So if you continue to, and that again is not, you know, any sort of crazy, you know, new world type manifestation, it's, but it's the truth. I mean, God designed our brain to, you know, do the things, the amazing things that it does in our life. And you have the ability to train your brain to believe the things that you want for yourself and that God wants for you. So, um, like I said, I'm going to just wrap this up here because now we are almost at 30 minutes. <laughs> Even though I know there is more than enough time to do everything that the Lord wants completed. Um, and I remember that, but I also want to respect your time. Um, so again, the five biblical declarations to reset your mindset when life is a hot mess. Number one, remember God is in control and victory is already mine when I accept his assignment for me. Number two, delayed is not denied. There is more than enough time to do everything the Lord wants completed. Number three, I have no shame in letting go and letting God. Number four, I'm present and live intentionally, recognizing that today is my assignment. God will take care of tomorrow. And number five, I am diligent in the waiting because I know the plans God has for me. Prosperity, safety, hope, and a future. And that's all I got. Have a fantastic week, and I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, ladies, for hanging out with me today. It's been a blast. Now, if today's episode was good for you and the spirit leads, please write a review to help others find us and receive some of the value that you got today. Okay, until next time, I'll see you over in the Healthy Spirit Facebook group. Link is in the show notes for you procrastinators. May grace and peace be yours in abundance. Take care.